Oh boy, I uh, Uh-oh. there's there's trouble. There's trouble. Mitch McConnell's office is just called. Uh, oh, no. Our oh, office no. is in New York, oh. and he's very upset. He's very upset. Mm, he but liked, he is. He liked the name of the of the senator. Who's releasing Who, this false informa- information. False and inaccurate information that he would say mm-hmm. anything like this. He would say nothing like this. Uh, far be he it from doesn't, him. He doesn't have a problem with Freedom Works or uh, SenateConservatives.com. He doesn't have a problem with that. He doesn't have a problem with Ted Cruz or Mike Lee. He Certainly didn't call them traitors. He didn't know. Now, I, I will say that the person that gave me this information said... That that's the word he heard. He could not remember the word actually used. He did not use the word traitor. But I'm wondering if anybody had a cell phone. I'm wondering if anybody happened to have that on tape. Oh, they probably don't allow cell phones into those. They probably private- don't. They probably don't. And you know what else they don't like? They also don't allow people to leak information from them. Right, because that's again. I mean, you know, they don't do that because it's against the rules. Do that. You'd really have to really anger uh, somebody who... Usually trusts you, I would, th- I would yeah. say. Too. Somebody who saw the mask come off and go, wait a minute, I might be on the wrong side. I might be on the wrong side because I don't necessarily agree with what Ted Cruz or how Ted Cruz did it. But I don't think that Freedom Works and Jim DeMint's organization, Senate conservatives, I don't think those are traitors. And I don't have the name of the second yeah. senator yet. But I'll bet when we get that name, boy, I bet he's going to call up, too, and he's going to demand some names of who spoke. Maybe we could have an inquisition. Hey, guys, progressive Republicans, you guys should just say confess or die. Wouldn't that be cool? You could do like an inquisition. (gasps) I know. Why not start like a some sort of a committee, uh, like a committee for uh, patriots or... Oh, no, I know. Committee for Un-American Activities. That's good. That's a good one. What do you think of like that? They got to start a one of those things. It, it does. Flow. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. I mean, I don't mean to uh, criticize the way you're handling this sure. uh, by any means. Uh-huh. Uh, however, I mean. I have a feeling you're going to, though. If the McConnell office called mm-hmm. and they said we'd like the name of the senator, mm. I mean, we just give up the source right away, right? I mean, he, he is asking. Oh, of course he's, we do. He's asking he's straight asking. out and nicely. And he's saying that it's not true. Right, so we just so give up the source. Here's what right? I'm offering. We should, we should have here's him on the air. That's what I'm offering. Oh, okay. That'd be great. Senator Mitch McConnell, the good senator from Kentucky, I know you are fighting for that Constitution. I know you'd never. Somebody who's been in power as long as you have. Nearly 30 years I in the Senate. I know you don't think too much of yourself. I know you don't think you're the all-powerful Oz. I know. I know we can trust you. We'd sure like to have you on the air, and Hmm. let's just discuss this. Let's talk about what happened in that meeting and the role you played, because I'm sure, I'm sure. Some misunderstanding. There's got to be some misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. This might not be advisable for him to take you up on this. I think it'd be great for him to take us up on that. Why? I mean, put me in my place. Mm -hmm. Put me in my place. Tell me. I suppose. I just think that maybe. Tell me. Maybe he, me. he should have a. A lunch scheduled, and then and then when he's on the air, he can say, "Hey, anybody is free uh, and and welcome to come on and talk mm-hmm. about everything that happened in that meeting to back me up." Yeah, as long as he and says then, that, as long as he'll come on and say, "Hey, I am going to make sure that there are no repercussions at all, mm-hmm. because I want to make sure that people can tell the truth." I'll have everybody on. Let's have him on. There's no repercussions at all. Come on, tell us what happened in that meeting. Tell us. Go ahead. Come on. Bring it on. Go ahead. Bring it on. Come on, brother. See, here's the problem. These guys read Politico. These guys read all of the stories about them. And those are important stories. It's like the people in the in the news uh, business. They read Mediate. And it's all the stories about them. They don't read the stuff about what the average person is thinking anymore. They're not reading the things that, that that people are actually saying. They're reading the stuff about me. What are they saying about me? You're so far out of touch with the American people that it's it's shameful. It's embarrassing for you. It is. It's embarrassing, Senator. 
But only one side is going to be standing in the end because you guys declared war. You declared war. And I don't know if you know this, but you're dealing with people who are not going to play the game. You call them terrorists, jihadists, suicide bombers, anarchists. You call people those names, you, and I'm not saying Mitch McConnell has used any of those names. We should check, find out if he has. But his buddies and the progressive Republicans, they've all used those names. You call people those names, and I'm sorry, it doesn't go unchecked. Who unleashed Pete King? Who's feeding him? Who's giving him little kibbles and bits? Who's giving him those? When did, when did Peter King become this pit bull all of a sudden? Whose bidding is he doing? Now, maybe he's just doing his own. Maybe he just really believes it. And that's possible. And we could just disagree with each other. I've always thought Peter King was a straight shooter. I've always thought he was really good on terror and everything else. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, he disagree. we disagree with each other like Michelle Bachman and I disagree on things. Michelle and I disagree on the NSA thing. I strongly disagree with her on that. But I believe she's a good person. I don't know what happened to Peter King. All of a sudden, Peter King is like unhinged. And it's strange how those are the, I mean, that's what we're talking about. Whoa, wow, Mitch, 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 Mitch. Somebody who believes in the Constitution and somebody who said to their constituency, you don't have a problem, Mitch, with Ted Cruz. You don't. Late at night, I don't know if you ever look down into your maker's mark and wonder what the hell happened to me what happened to my soul when i first came here i actually believed in a few things and you look down in your maker's mark and you shuffle around in your big house with your house coat on and your and your senate cufflinks and you think i'm the ruler of the world and you shuffle around your house do you ever do you ever stop to think what you've become when you're going and you're saying to somebody who ran against Obamacare and said, I will do everything I can to repeal it. I will do everything I can to stop it. You don't have a problem with Freedom Works. You have a problem with the people of Texas. That's fine. You represent Kentucky. He represents Texas. If that's the way people in Kentucky... What the, if that's what they want in a senator, a senator who says he's against it, but then doesn't do anything. Well, that's fine. That's the people of Kentucky. Leave the people of Texas alone. It seemed odd from the people of Kentucky who elected Rand Paul, though. Yeah, no, I, don't I know. know. It doesn't seem to were... make sense. And that's why I said that I think he's out of touch, shuffling around in his, you know, in his house coat, which... his house coat. Have you seen him in a house coat? I, no. Oh, I just, I imagine, you know, I've seen mm -hmm. these movies where these big, you know, rich senators, they shuffle around in those. House you know coats? those not those house coats. What do you call them? Those 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 smoking jacket. Smoker's kind of jacket. Thing. Okay. Yeah. You know yes. where he's taken off his tie, mm -hmm. but he's got the smoking jacket on. He still has the cufflinks on that say sure. U.S. Senator. Yeah. And he's like smoking his cigar. <sighs> Who the hell does he think he is? <laughs> I'm Mitch McConnell. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. I don't know if that's the way it actually is playing out every day. And is it Maker's Mark or is it Jim Bean? No, it'd be Maker's Mark. It would? Yeah, it'd be Maker's Mark. Right. He's, from, you know, he's, from, well, he's from Kentucky. He's from Kentucky, so, so he's, he's drinking bourbon. I'm not but having any of that. Aren't they both Kentucky? I'm not having any of that street whiskey from down oh, south. Right. This is Kentucky. I drink a gentleman's drink. I drink Aren't they bourbon. both Kentucky don't beverages? Know. I don't know. I, I I'm an alcoholic, are. and as alcoholics, uh, I, mm -hmm. think we can, I think I can speak at a higher level. Um, well, Jim Beam, sure, might be good, mm -hmm. but that's riffraff. Okay, you know, Maker's Mark is the well, is the drink of a senator. You uh, you were good at drinking from the bottle, not necessarily reading it. Very good, mm -hmm. very good, very good. But mm -hmm. it was, it had the wax on top enough for me to go. I want the, the red stuff on top. <laughs> Give me that one. So I don't I don't know if any of that actually is happening, or if he actually owns a smoking jacket, or if he drinks or drinks Maker's Mark. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just know this. These two groups, Freedom Works and the Senate Conservatives Fund, are funding people who are standing for the Constitution. And yes, they're going outside of your cute little circle that you guys have created, which, by the way, has brought us to $17 trillion in debt, has brought us to a place to where we have universal health care about to be shoved down the throats of every American, except for your special interest and you, of course. 
You have brought us to the brink of destruction. We are in war after war after war. You have brought us here. And so somebody else says, I'm not going to play this game anymore because I don't think I don't think you guys really even look at the Constitution anymore. And so they say, we're going to fund people who believe in the Constitution and might believe in something maybe maybe even 60, 70 percent the same as Mitch McConnell. But that 30 or 40 percent makes a lot of difference. And so we're going to we're going to look for constitutionalists and we're going to go for people who will tell the voters one thing and then do that one thing when they get elected. And somehow or another, people like Mitch McConnell think that that's well, they know better. They know better. That's not the way Washington works. Well, I don't know if you know this, Senator, but Washington doesn't work. It doesn't work. And we're either going to fix the Republican Party or there's millions of Americans who are just going to be out of the Republican Party. And I got news for you. We're not the ones that just go and just go away. You don't want a third party? Good. Then fix the second one. Fix it. Find its principles again. Find true north and fix it. Because really, one thing's going to happen. You guys are either going to be voted out and we're going to fix it because me and I recommend that all of my listeners and everybody, everybody, stop giving to the Republican Party. Stop giving to these. Give to people that they, the progressives have marked as enemies. Give to them. And Senator, if that's not what you believe, come on on. Come on. And I'll apologize to you when you say these words. I wholeheartedly support Freedom Works and the Senate Conservatives Fund. I think they are good people and they go and they find constitutionalists and I recommend that senators take money from them and work side by side with them. That sure would be an interesting thing to hear. Of course, I'm not sure I would believe you, but I don't know who to believe because I've got a senator telling me one thing and you're another senator. And both of you have been in the Senate for a long time, and I don't trust anybody who's been in Washington a long time. But somehow or another, the story of a senator throwing people under the bus because they stand for the Constitution, that one is the one that seems to ring true to me. But Mitch McConnell, you have an open invitation to come on the program, and we will let you talk just as we did with Newt Gingrich. We love to hear from progressive Republicans.